For those of you online who don't know me, my name is Kevin. For those of you online who don't know me, my name is Kevin. For those of you online who don't know me, my name is Kevin. Um, I just want to go over a couple of things here before we get started. Um, the monthly theme, it, it, I'm going to read it, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. And that has been the common thread that has gone through every Bible study, every preaching message. And Pastor Gila reminded us of a Sunday service, souls matter. Um, yes, souls matter. And so does a lot of other things. But in the end, when we leave this world, the only thing that's going to matter is souls. Everything we do here, we're leaving behind. Everything we have in this world, we're leaving behind. The only thing we can take with us is the, is, is the souls that we help get to Christ, to stay in Christ, to be with Christ. Amen. And our own soul. That's it. So the only thing you're taking with you, your own soul. <laughs> anyway... Uh, the Bible study team theme for this month was Psalms 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And this is uh, an important part of the study tonight because uh, most of the, the studies have surrounded letting your light shine, advertising for God. Brother Armand shared with us a couple of Sundays ago. It's advertisement. We're being a light to the world. We're going to read some scriptures later, but Jesus was the light when he was here, and now we are that light. But we can't be that light if our souls aren't clean, if our, if our hands aren't clean, if, our, if our, our garments aren't washed in the blood of the Lamb. We've got to make sure that we're pure, make sure that we're right, make sure that we're living for God. Amen. Make sure that we're letting our light shine by not being part of this world, by not doing the things that the world does, that lifting up Christ in our own lives, in our own hearts, for our own sakes, would radiate out to all of them. So tonight we're going to be talking, before we have a prayer here, tonight we're going to be talking about Jesus giving sight to a man who was born blind. I'm going to read the scripture, the title scripture for tonight is uh, John chapter 9, verse 11. And he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. So let's have, if you guys don't mind bowing your heads with me for a word of prayer. As we invite God's presence in. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, God. And we pray that your spirit would be upon us here, Lord, in the reading of your word. That we would find you in your word, Jesus, because you are your word. And Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for putting it on paper that we can have it in our, in our hands. We can have it in our homes. We can have it anywhere we go, Jesus. Thank you so much for those that sacrificed to give us your word and print. We love you. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so Jesus uh, came to a man with his disciples who was blind from birth. He never saw a day in his life. He had eyes, but he couldn't see. So Jesus anointed, Jesus, excuse me, I am sorry here. Um, verse uh, 6, Pete, of John, chapter 9, verse 6. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed his eyes, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. I want to talk about the pool of Siloam for very briefly here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But the term pool of Siloam refers to a number of rock cut pools. So Siloam wasn't the name of one specific pool, it was the name of a lot of them. Uh, anywhere there was a bathing pool, wherever people had, there was, was public bathing pools and there was private bathing pools. And they were all from a tunnel that was dug by Hezekiah. And the tunnel's name was Siloam, which means scent. And it was just basically an aqueduct that ran through the city. And, and it was um, fed by, the, by a spring called Gihon that pushed the water up 
down through this tunnel. And wherever they wanted to have a, have a bath, wherever they wanted to have a public bath, or rich people had, them, had uh, pools of Siloam in their own homes. They had hired people to cut out the rock that they could access the water that was being forced up by the spring. So Siloam simply means that the spring is pushing or sending the water to these locations. I'll finish reading this. It refers to a number of rock cut pools located outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem to the southeast. The, pe- the, the pools were fed by the waters of the Gihon Spring carried there by the Siloam Tunnel. And I want to read that real quick here. Second Kings chapter 20, verse 20, where this tunnel came from. And of the, one more time, Second Kings 20, 20. And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So the pool of Siloam was built during the reign of Hezekiah to lead besieging armies without, without access to the spring's waters. The pool was fed by the newly constructed Siloam tunnel. An older Canaanite tunnel had been vulnerable to attackers. So under threat of the, from the Assyrian king Sennacherib, Hezekiah sealed the old outlet of the Gihon Spring and built a new underground Siloam Tunnel in in place of the old older tunnel. So that's all this is, is is city-fed water. So we have, now these these pools are called mikvahs uh, in the Jewish language. And there was a lot of them and people had them in their homes and people had, there was public ones, there was men's ones, there was women's ones. David had one outside his window, unfortunately for him. Um, but we have a pool back here ourselves. We have a, a mikvah, a bathing pool, a, a pool a, a, that we can baptize in. It's just a body of water back here. And the water doesn't mean anything. It's, it's that, that tank back there is filled with tap water supplied by the city. And every mikvah in Israel was was supplied by tap water from city, the city got the conduit, okay? Simple as that. So in John, now we're going to go through John chapter 9, verses 1 through 11. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So this guy's born blind for the sole intent of Jesus being able to heal him. Jesus in verse 4 said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, when Jesus left the world, he made us lights. And, and he said that we're the light of the world now. We, sh- we reflect the glory of God. We reflect Jesus Christ to people in the lives that we live. And that's going to be the recurring theme here. And verse 6 said, And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So the water isn't special. And the, the, the clay, now this man was born blind. Now, God made it, and Pastor Gabriel shared that God made us from the dust of the earth. He shared Sunday. He made Adam, and then he took a rib out of, out of Adam and made Eve. Now, God made us from the clay of the ground. So for this, for this man to be born blind, God went into the womb and interrupted the development of this man's eyes. So the mud, the clay that he made, put on his eyes, completed that process that God set in motion when he made Adam out of the dust of the earth. And he sent him to wash, the, wash in the pool of Siloam because he had mud in his eyes, as simple as that. It wasn't anything magic about the pool. It wasn't anything magic about anything. The, the, God healed that man. God interrupted his, his, his ability to see that 20 years later, and we know that he was about 20 years later because later on they say, he's, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. We don't want to answer for him. So he had to be at least 20. 
20 plus, who knows? But that was a long time to go to be somebody that God was going to use to do a mighty work in, to glorify God, to show the light of God, that the work of God might be seen in him. And this is where we're going with this study, that it's the works and it was the miracles and it was, it was all the signs and the wonders and the things that Jesus did that made people understand this is God in the flesh coming to tell us what to do here. In verse 8, it says, The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some of them said, This is he. Others said, He is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How are thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man, a man who is called Jesus. So this miracle that Jesus did was, was, was of God, a work of God, in order for him, for people to know there's Jesus Christ. He is here with us, Emmanuel with us. God's here. And there couldn't be denied. This guy was blind his whole life. We know him. He was begging us his whole life. I, every time I went by him, I gave him a little bit here and there. So they, they knew who this man was, and now he's sitting here seeing, and they're saying, well, how, how, how is it that you are? And he said, a man who is called Jesus made clay. I'm sorry. A man who was called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So now Jesus was on the earth doing these miracles, doing these wonders for about three and a half years. We know that because he went up to uh, Jerusalem three times for Passover and the final one he was killed and murdered um, so we know we know that that was about the timeline that he was here but when he left he returned as in in the form of the Holy Ghost filled us and made us the lights of the world we are now his body we now carry his word to people through living it in our own lives because if we're not living it they're not going to hear it anyway and that's been a recurring theme in a lot of the messages but I want to get to the men's prayer meeting that we had out here um, Friday night last week, was it? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, it was just an anointed time. It was a beautiful time. Amen. But Pastor Malcolm shared about Brother Eugene um, um, <laughs> Shackelford that wouldn't it be, we should we obviously are praying for him all the time. We're praying for everybody in the church. We pray for each other. But wouldn't it be a miracle that nobody could deny if, if, if Brother Gene was healed of what, they're, what, what these doctors are saying we can't do anything for? People would come from, because he's in the, uh, the veterans, and Pastor Malcolm said this, he's in the Veterans Administration database. So there would be no denying this. There'd be no covering this up. There'd be no hiding it. And when the word got out, people would sell everything they had to fly here to get this healing. And this is where we're going with the study now. And then during that, um, that, that, that prayer meeting, um, Brother Tommy um, Ramey started speaking in tongues. And Pastor Malcolm, who was standing next to me, started interpreting those tongues. Now, these are two gifts of the Spirit, okay? The gift of speaking in tongues, praising God in an unknown tongue that only you and God understands, and somebody who can interpret it. The gift of... Paul said if somebody's going to be speaking in tongues, you've got to have an interpreter. Well, we got both. Well, so we already got two of these gifts nailed down, right? And, and one of the things that stood out to me and then when Pastor Malcolm was, was interpreting the tongues, was that when Tommy was praying to God, he said, you, you have the keys to the kingdom. So Jesus is right there with us, unlocking the door, okay? Now, in, in, in John chapter 12, verse 32, it says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And this is what we need to do, is to lift Jesus Christ up. Now, we do this every day as Christians. We lift up God in our lives. Amen. When we're living the 
truth. When we're, when we're not partaking and we're not participating in the worldly things, we're standing apart from that, saying, no, that God said, don't do that, so I'm not doing that. When we do what God says to do, when we, we seek his word, when we're, always, when we're praying all the time, when we're fellowshipping with each other, when we're, when we're desirous to get, to get to God and to speak of the glory of God, okay, that we're letting our light shine all the time. But we need the gifts of healing. We need the gifts of miracles. We need Amen. the gifts of works in, in our church. It doesn't mean any individual person has to have all these things, even though I'm personally praying for every last one of them. I want them all. But, I mean, just because um, it, you, we pray for ourselves to get these gifts, but what if God decides, well, we are all members of the body of Christ. We all have our own certain place in the body of Christ. What if God gives, you're praying for the gift of healing, but what if God gives it to, to, to um, somebody else that's sitting, you know, that's in the body, and that they have it, and that they're going out and doing the healings? That doesn't change the answer to your prayer. Because it is a, it, we are the body. It is the church. We're not trying to be special of ourselves. We need to. We want to lift up Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So now I'm going to read a few things here in Matthew chapter six, verse thirty-one through thirty-four. Excuse me, Mark thirty, Mark chapter six, thirty-one through thirty-four. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place. And rest a while, for there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities. And out went them and came together unto him. They ran to him. When they knew that he was here, they were running to get to Jesus. Well, they had infirmities, they had needs, they had things they wanted healed, they had things that they, they wanted to hear, they wanted to know it. What, what was going on here. They wanted to talk to him. They wanted to hear him talk. They ran to him. And that was the, the, uh, the point that Pastor Malcolm was making on the Friday night uh, uh, prayer meeting, is if, 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 if we would have healings in this church, if we, people were getting healed, if there was undeniable miracles is really what this comes down to. If it's, okay, just, okay, you're a good guy, that's great. I mean, if you're just shining your light, you're living a good, good life, oh, you're, you're a real nice person, I get that. But if somebody's getting healed, you can't deny that. Right. That's not coming from a person. Amen. That's not coming from a man or a woman. That's coming from God and God only. If we had that kind of thing happening, then the people, now not to draw them here to this building with its vaulted ceiling, but to draw them unto Christ to be yes, saved. Sir. Because at the end of life, all that matters is souls. Amen. All right? I mean, yes, we have to live this. We, we're, we're, we're both, we're, we're half and half. We're, we're half breeds. We're half spirit, half flesh. We have to live in both worlds. And we're the only creature that can. We communicate with heaven and we live here on, in, on earth, right? But in the end, everything that, that, that's important, we have to go, we have to get up and go to work, got to come home, take a shower, got to get, you get your rest, you got to eat, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to make, you know what I'm saying? You, yes, we have to live in both worlds, but the, the world that matters is the, is the spiritual world, the world to come, the kingdom of heaven. Because when we're leaving the ground, I'm not looking back. Well, wow, that's something that looks like. No, I'm looking up to where I'm going. <laughs> so it's not going to matter about this world. It's not going to matter what, the, what we had to do in this, in this life. What matters is souls, and that's all that matters is souls. In verse 34, it said, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. Now, remember, Jesus had taken them aside because they were tired. There were so many people coming and going everywhere they went. They were exhausted, and they didn't even have time to eat. Jesus took them away to rest. But when the people saw him taking them away to rest, they ran to him. And when Jesus turned around and looked, he had compassion on them. He was ready to minister unto them. And that was another point that was made Friday night at the fellowship. Would we be ready? If God did heal, start healing people, Jesus. and people started coming here and flying from, from other countries to, to, for this, would we be ready to minister to them? Would we be ready to share with them? Would we be ready to, 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 to help them come to the knowledge of Christ? 
So, um, this is not going to be a long Bible study, believe it or not. Um, I always take my time, brother, but and, I, and then I take some of yours. But uh, Acts chapter five, verses twelve through sixteen. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, thus thirst no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And what he was talking about, the rest, was that the Pharisees were standing back. They didn't want, they didn't want anything to do with them. But the people were magnifying him. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, multitudes, because of these signs and wonders, because of these healings. And I'm going to go on in verse 15. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Peter's shadow was people were getting healed just being underneath his shadow as he walked by. That's how much spirit they, that the apostles were seeking God for day and night. Verse 16, there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick, sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. So here's, there, people are hearing about these things in, in faraway cities, faraway towns, faraway places, and they're coming here to Jerusalem to, for these healings. They're coming there, and they're getting Jesus in the, in the mix of this. See? They're coming to get themselves healed, the biggest part of the, of the healing that the people need is their spiritual healing. And every last one of us, every Christian in the world, is a miracle of God. Every, because everybody is dead in sin. Every last one of us has been raised from the dead. Everybody that's ever gotten saved was raised from the dead. So we are all miracles. And this is... That's the one miracle that God wants everybody to have, is to be cleansed of their sins, to be raised from the dead from their sins, to be brought unto him. In, verse, in Acts chapter 3, verses 6 through 11, Peter said, silver and gold. Now, here's the story. Uh, Peter and John went up to the temple, and which they probably did in the sound, in, in, I don't know if they did it three times every day, but they went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, which is three times a day. And when they would go up, they, of course, they would talk to people, minister to people. In this particular time, they went up, and there was a, lame, there was a man lame from his, from his, from his mother's womb. Verse, I'm going to read verse 2. It's not going to be on the thing. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms. And when Peter and John saw this guy, they, 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 they told him, look on us. And he thought, he held out his hand, thinking they were going to give him some coin or something or whatever. And Peter in verse 6 said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So here's the key. So now he's going to heal this guy. This, this man who's never walked in his life is now going to receive strength to his legs so he can walk in the name of Jesus Christ, which is, is, is really what the point is here, that these works, these miracles, these wonders, us letting our light shine is to glorify God and to let people see that it's Jesus that we have that makes us so that's doing these things, and that's who they need. Okay. Um, in verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Okay, so this, this guy's never walked in his life, and he's these people looking at him. Oh, my, he's, he's jumping around like, he's, like a 10-year-old. Like a he just got a new toy. And in verse 10, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement, all that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. They ran to this. 
when they're hearing about it, the guy's in there walking around, he's jumping and leaping, the, you know, the lame guy. They were running into that. They were running to, to see what was going on here. And this is what we need to, to have in our lives. In, verse, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. All we have to do is ask. All God, in, in, verse, in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, if ye then being evil, which we all are really in the flesh, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And that's what we're at. When we're asking for the gifts of the Spirit, we're asking for the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Whatever that gift might be, a prophecy, teaching, this is the gift that I asked God for many years ago and gave to me. Um, the ability to understand the word of God, the gifts of healing, the, gift, the gifts of, 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 of being able to share, being able to witness, the gifts of just being a help. Those, and I didn't take the time to put down all that because I wouldn't have been here for a long time. Um, but th- we need all these spiritual gifts and all we got to do is ask for them and he's going to give them to us. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is ask. I'm asking for all of them. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Well, when he went back up into heaven, he came back as the Holy Ghost. Greater works are we going to be able to do. All we're going to do is seek for him. And, and somewhere along the line, we just got complacent and just stopped. I don't know. Well, well. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We have to come to God faith believing, and we've got to seek these things diligently. Do you really want them? Or just like, oh, I'd like to have that and just walk away from it. No. If you really want something, you can't, yes, you just can't stop thinking about what that yes, thing is. Every, every waking minute, even when you're not looking at it, you, yes, you're sir. thinking about it. When you want something, when you diligently seek for something, that's all you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, believe it or not, last scripture. Luke chapter 13, verse 25. When once the master of the house has risen up, and has shut to the door, and you begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer unto you, I know you not, once you are. So what we're looking at now is, is a world that's really getting to the point where in the old world before God brought in the flood, they got to the point where God wasn't going to take any more from them. And we're seeing a world now where it's getting to the point where God is not going to take any more from them. And if, if all that matters is souls, we need to be more diligent than ever right now because when, when once God comes, that's it. Nobody else is getting in. When Jesus, when, when God comes and takes back the gift of the Holy Spirit, those that are in the Spirit are going up, and the, and the fullest ones aren't going up with them. So give diligence. Well, well. I'm done. Amen. Amen.